You're listening to School Counseling Simplified, a podcast with easy-to-implement strategies for busy school counselors. Here's your host, Rachel Davis, from Bright Futures Counseling. Do you ever have a kiddo pop into your office last minute and you need an activity to do quickly? Or do you ever wish you had access to hundreds of school counseling resources at your fingertips? Well, my Impact School Counselor membership is for you. Inside Impact, you get access to hundreds of resources sorted by topic, tier, season, or monthly lesson plans. Simply log on, find what you need, download it, and use it with your students right away. You also get access to our community where you can meet like-minded school counselors to troubleshoot tough cases, get inspired, and collaborate with your colleagues. Not only that, we also know how important it is to stay on top of your professional development. That's why we offer live quarterly trainings on hot topics that you need most. Impact is designed to make your counseling life easier. I know you're super busy. That's why I've made it super simple to access everything you need in one place. This way you can spend your time and energy doing what you love the most, helping kiddos. If you're looking for a one-stop shop for all of your counseling needs so you don't have to worry about searching on different sites, paying for things here and there, you can find everything you need on demand in one place in Impact. Head over to stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash impact to watch a sneak peek video behind the scenes of what all is included in the membership. Again, that's stressfreeschoolcounseling.com slash impact to get started today. I can't wait to help you make an impact. Hey there, thanks for listening to another episode of School Counseling Simplified. So today's episode is a little bit different. As you know, I love to do day in the life of a school counselor episodes where I interview real school counselors just like you all about what their day in the life looks like. It's kind of fun to hear, you know, what's similar and what's different about everyone's days, what they love about counseling, what they find frustrating, and what advice they would give to new counselors. So I love and look forward to these interviews. But this week, due to some scheduling changes, the one I thought I was going to do is not happening. It's been a little bit of a delay. So I decided I was going to interview myself (laughs) and to share my day in the life of a counselor episode. And I thought this would be kind of a fun about me episode as well because a lot of new listeners are here. So for those of you who have been long-term listeners, some of this may be repetitive. But for those of you who are new to me um, and still getting to know me, you may find this helpful. So let's dive in. So I'm going to ask myself (laughs) the same questions that I ask my day in the life of a school counselor guest. And if you want to hear those, we do about one a month. um, So go back and check those out. Okay, so first up, tell us a little bit about you and your background in education. (laughs) It's so weird interviewing myself. I should have had someone do this with me. But, well, I'm Rachel Davis from Bright Futures Counseling, and as you may know, I have a bit of a southern accent, so I feel like I always have to start my story in Georgia, which is where I'm from. Born and raised Georgia girl, multi-generational Georgia families, (laughs) and then I was the crazy one who up and moved, decided I wanted to move to the West Coast, so moved to San Diego, and then I ended up going to grad school there. So I did my undergrad at Georgia College and State University, go Bobcats, um, in Georgia. It's a smaller public liberal arts college, and I majored in psychology, minored in Spanish, and did an internship at a community-based nonprofit. Um, The nonprofit helped with all kinds of things, but one thing they did was link me up with Communities and Schools, which is actually a national program that helps at-risk youth. And through that program, I really kind of got the passion for working with students and decided that I thought I wanted to pursue school counseling. So flash forward to San Diego, I'm going to school to be a school counselor, um, grad school at Point Loma Nazarene University, go see Lions, whoop whoop. <laughs> um, it is a private school in uh, San Diego, and so I was going to school there. The classes I think started at like 4 p.m., so then I was working in the daytime, and I was working as what was called a resource counselor with adults with developmental disabilities, loved that job pay was abysmal. Those people should get paid way more. But um, it was so cool. It was a nonprofit where we were helping adults with developmental disabilities with like life skills coaching. Um, I helped with like a tailored day program and some job assistance, things like that. So really cool. But that was with older 18 and up. So these were people who had, you know, graduated high school and then maybe they did like an extended program um, through special ed. And then now they were adults trying to enter you know the workforce in the real world just like the rest of us i was like their peer so it was pretty cool um and then 
It was kind of a crazy time in my life because I was working my day job and doing night grad school. And then I, you know, had to do my internship hours. So I started doing my practicum and all of that. Um, so I was running all over San Diego County, going between all these schools, you know. And they said that we only had to pick two of three placements for our practicum. We could do elementary, middle, or high school, pick two. I decided I wanted to do all three <laughs> because I wanted to get a full comprehensive picture of like what school counseling was like at each level so I could truly decide what I liked best. Um, I loved elementary and middle, but really liked elementary. And then I started applying for jobs, you know, hoping to get an elementary school counseling job. I was applying all over, like within an hour radius of my house um, to everything, private, public, charter, just you name it, so many interviews. Uh, kind of a stressful time for me and I did not land a job so I was super bummed. Um, one like part-time guidance tech kind of opportunity came up but I couldn't afford part-time. I really needed something full-time financially because I wanted, I was ready to start my career you know. I didn't want to do like two jobs. So I kind of settled on a um, academic and counseling specialist but mostly an academic specialist aka like a tutor or kind of supporting an executive functioning skills study skills planning but some social skills stuff as well um, at an educational consulting company so this was private families who felt like their kids needed more support than the schools were offering would hire us to help and they would come after school so I was working with students um, you know and I was really forming those connections and I think I was integrating more of the social skills part of it, you know, than my peers. I was always pushing that like social emotional piece because that was my passion and my experience. Um, so it was a valuable year, but I truly hated that job. <laughs> so it was it was tough. And the whole time I was just wishing I was a school counselor. Um, but next round of, you know, applying goes out. I started applying and then I landed my dream job at an elementary school, what a district, so two elementary schools rather, one primary K2 and one 3-5. Um, so they kind of fed into each other in San Diego County. Loved my schools, great job. Um, worked there for a couple years. And while I was working there, I, you know, like all of you, realized that I needed to make some of my own things, that the, we were using second step, but I wanted to supplement the curriculum as well. So I started kind of making my own things, and that's how my blog, Bright Futures Counseling, and my Teachers by Teachers store was born. Um, flash forward again, my husband and I took a couple years off and traveled, essentially like backpacked the world, which was kind of crazy and adventurous, but so glad we had that time and ability to do that. And then we settled down, quote unquote, in Costa Rica, and I worked as a K-12 school counselor at an international school here. I loved working at the international school. It was a really unique experience. It was private, K-12, so it was small. We had about 300 kids, whereas at the two elementary schools, I had a combined caseload of over 1,000. Um, so it was a very different, and working at a private school is different because the parents you know, have a lot more input, and there's a board that you have to make happy all the time, too. So I honestly prefer working in the public school setting but the private school was really cool. It was neat because a lot of the students, you know, were from Costa Rica, but only about half. The other half were from the United States, from Canada, from Europe, from South America. It was a very diverse campus with students from all kinds of different countries. Almost everyone was bilingual. Many students were trilingual. Um, and just knowing that we were all here, or many of us were here as newcomers, right? Whereas the newcomer is usually a small percentage at the school. In this case, like, almost half the school was a newcomer to the country so and myself included so we could relate a lot on that topic um, so I was doing a lot of new student groups helping students fit in um, worked with the high school there a little bit as well and that was something I wish I did more of I tended to support the elementary and middle more because that's where my comfort zone was but I you know they high school was my caseload as well we had a different administrator who was in charge of the college portion and academic advising so I was truly only there for social emotional high school um, but I feel like I could have done a little more I still live in Costa Rica love it feel super blessed to live here um, and now I have my own children and my other baby is my business which is Bright Futures Counseling and through Bright Futures Counseling I have this podcast School Counseling Simplified where I serve counselors and then I primarily am serving counselors through Impact which is my membership for school counselors so I have a monthly membership for school counselors we have over 500 counselors in there they're amazing 
it's a place that I created to create community because I know so often we feel like we're on our own islands. You know, you may be the only counselor at your school site. So it's really inspiring and encouraging to connect with other counselors, to feel supported, and to talk to people who just get it, you know? And then also in there, I include every resource from my TPT store because I wanted to support counselors in a more comprehensive way. So instead of you just, you know, going on and buying something here and there, you pay a monthly rate, you get access to all the resources and all of the community. And we do community calls, giveaways, challenges. It's a fun time. Um, and then we do some professional development as well. So that's what I'm up to these days. I'm supporting counselors through my podcast, blog, membership, um, and still my TPT store. And we're actually opening a new store on our own site. So be on the lookout for that. I'm actually gonna be selling some like um, fun counselor merch too, like sweatshirts and coffee mugs and teas and stuff like that. Anyways, side note. So that was kind of long-winded. It's easy to talk about yourself. I actually heard a podcast the other day. It was like a podcast for podcasters. And they were saying, maybe skip the question, saying, tell me about yourself, because people just tend to go on and on. <laughs> and I am now that person. But I thought it would be fun to kind of introduce myself to those of you who don't know me well. Um, what do I love about counseling? That's the next question. I love, probably the same thing everyone says, the student connection, the light bulb moment watching the kids really get a concept. You know, I love when a student, I don't love when they're struggling, but I love when a student who is struggling is referred to me and I'm able to see in real time them make positive changes. A kid who used to hide under the table or throw a chair when they get upset, to watch them use a coping skill to calm down is like so awesome and so gratifying. I love that. I also love to support families, um, you know, working with like low SES kids and how we can support not just them but their whole family and getting them the resources that they need just to have a better life and how the school can really help in that um, is important to me as well. So I love that piece of it as well. Uh, I love small groups. They're my favorite part. I love a small group setting, really connecting with the kids. I like being silly with the kids. I like upper elementary. You can be a little sarcastic. They, you know, can pick on you a little bit. It's fun. Um, tough, a little more tough love, you know, than with the littles. Now, what is frustrating about counseling? Well, I would say what's frustrating about counseling is the lack of awareness about what we do and how um, trivialized it is made the same. So people will be like, oh, school counselor, what do you do? Like tell kids where they're going to go to college or I don't know. I feel like it kind of has a bad rap in large part to previous experiences when people were just guidance counselors before the role has shifted to school counselor. Um, I also think it gets a bad rap from the media, right, from movies and negative portrayals or just kind of like reducing us to one, one portion of what we do. Um, so I think it is frustrating when staff, parents, principals, you know, don't support the role, don't really understand the role, don't really care to understand the role, and are just kind of throwing things at you and expecting you to fix it with a magic wand. Um, that is frustrating. But I think the optimistic part about this is that it's on us to do something about it, right? Like, we can fix it. It's not like we just have this frustration that we have to sit with. Instead, we can share, hey, this is what I do. Advocate for your role. Collect data. Share the data. Show the numbers present at the school board meetings, you know, do all of those things and say, look, this is what I can do. Um, this is how I can help. So that's what I recommend that you do. I'm so passionate about helping counselors advocate for themselves. Okay, next question. What does a day in the life of a school counselor look like or a day in my life look like? So I flashed back to 2020, uh, February, so pre-pandemic, when I was working at the international school and I just I had a screenshot of one of my calendars there. And I was like, I just, is a random week. It's February 3rd through 7th, 2020. Um, and I just kind of wanted to share with you guys what I was up to. <laughs> I thought this would be a fun way to do a day in the life. So I started my week with a, to prepare. I had some time allotted to prepare, which I totally encourage the counselors to do is schedule in planning time. Cause you're likely not getting a planning period. So you have to make your own. But Monday morning, you know, great time to get started, prep for the week. So I was preparing a health lesson that I had later that day, later that morning. Um, I was collaborating with our health teacher because uh, she wanted to do, she was awesome. She wanted to do more like mental health stuff, stress stuff, vaping, 
um, things that kind of had some crossover with school counseling. So I was totally there to support her and I wanted to do that as well. So that was for middle school students. We actually had a lesson on vaping with seventh graders. Then I went straight from there to a kindness group. And then after that, that was with elementary, then I had an individual student then I had like a little 30 minute break. Then I had lunch duty, so I was in the cafeteria. I did not like lunch duty, <laughs> but it was, well, I mean, it was okay. But the thing was weird, we had microwaves, which at the schools I attended and the public school I worked at, there like wasn't an option for reheating. You just eat like your brown bag or whatever, or you could get hot lunch from the school. But here, all these kids would bring elaborate meals from home and we had to heat it up in the microwave for them. It was a whole thing. There was like a microwave line. Um, after that, I had another individual session, and then I had some prep time at the end where uh, an hour at the end of my day to wrap up things and prep for some SEL lessons that I was doing that month because this is the beginning of the month, so I was probably still planning for the month. And the next day, I had one of those SEL lessons, first thing. Um, and then I had a little break. Then I had, and when I say a break, I mean like students are dropping in left and right. I'm planning and printing and, you know, all the things. Just nothing on the calendar that I'm looking at here. Then I had an individual session. Then I had, it says fifth grade girls check-in. So I think I just had some girls, I wasn't seeing them for a group or anything, but it was like an issue that had been brought to my attention. So I just brought them in to kind of have a little conflict resolution chat. Then I had PBIS snack duty. So I was on snack duty, but it was more than just supervising. We had like a one person from each duty was assigned to PBIS. And because it was the counselor, it was my role during this duty. Um, so any time that there was a conflict or something at snack duty, uh, that would be sent to me and we would do like a written reflection of PBIS, what they could do better, differently, things like that. Um, then I had a meeting with my principal, probably just to fill her in on everything I was up to. Then I had an anger management group and then I had a parent meeting. So pretty busy. The next day, it says I was out of office. <laughs> I think I had a... Um, like a maternity, I was pregnant at the time with my first son. So I think I had like a appointment or something. Um, and then the, I was part-time, so I didn't work. I left at two every day and I didn't work Fridays. So it was pretty sweet. Then on Thursday, I had an individual session straight into another health lesson, straight into a snack duty, two more individuals, straight into a recess duty, which I had probably switched because I think I usually wouldn't have two duties a day, but I bet because of my doctor's appointment. And then I had what I called the talking club. This was cool. It was a club that some high school girls decided they wanted to do all on their own. They just merely needed an adult there uh, for supervision. So I really didn't facilitate. I would just kind of fly on the wall and then I would interject here and there. They called it talking club, but they it was essentially a counseling group that these girls self-facilitated. They talked about body image. Um, they talked a lot about like bullying and just anything, friendship issues at the high school. It was really, really cool, and I felt super lucky that they asked me to be the one to kind of supervise that. I did it with my teacher friend, um, so we kind of like, you know, sat in the back on our computers and did our own thing, but we were, you know, in there as well. I was trying to give them their space, you know, to hold the group themselves, but it was really cool to chime in and just to get a pulse on how it was going. So, talking club it was a really cool. So, I know that might have been kind of boring <laughs> just for me to read out my schedule, but I thought it was kind of fun just to grab like a random week. All right, last question. What advice would you give a new school counselor? So this is a great question. Um, you know, I'm really, it's causing me to pause and think. It's something I ask people all the time. But what advice would I give a new school counselor? I think my advice would be to be visible, to not eat lunch in your office, and to just try all the things. So be visible. What I mean is walk around campus, you know, like, so many things happen that aren't formal. So yes, you get a formal referral where you schedule it and you're gonna see the student. But so many little interactions or little relationships are happening all the time, you know, in between classrooms, at buses, at drop off, at pickup, at recess, at lunch. So it's cool just to be, you know, walking around, visible, people are seeing you, they're like, hey, that's our counselor. In a positive way, you're making connections with these kiddos, but you're also there if there is a conflict or something to help them practice their coping skills in action. Totally recommend that. Eat lunch out of your office. I'm speaking to myself. I am so notorious for like holding up in my office and working while eating lunch. Um, but sit with the teachers, get to know the teachers, you know, they're your allies, you wanna be friends with them. And also, or you can walk around the cafeteria, mingle with students, or you could do a lunch bunch, but 
I'm honestly not a big fan of lunch budgets. They get kind of messy and you can't really do like a full expression small group because you know, it's hard to get out all the activity things when kids are trying to eat too. Um, but I would say, you know, maybe once a week if you're an introvert and you need that time to recharge, but get out there and use that as a connection point as well. And then finally, just try all the things. Try before you're ready. Do a group, do a lesson, run a school-wide activity, you know, do a parent workshop. Just try some stuff. See what happens. Um, I used to try all the things. I was so excited my first year, and I remember my supervisor, it was like our director of student services, he was like, wait, it's your first year? I thought you've been working here like three years. I'm like, no, I'm like brand new. He was shocked at all the things I was doing, but I wasn't waiting to be asked to do something. I was just like, which that's kind of my personality anyways. So this may be a little out of your comfort zone, you know, personality dependent, but just try something new, you know? Um, I think whenever you take risks and get out of your comfort zone is when you truly grow and shine. So that would be my advice. Okay, guys, I hope you found this kind of wacky episode helpful. Um, yes, I will talk to you guys next week. We'll have a more normal-ish episode. Until then, have an awesome week. See ya. Thanks for listening to School Counseling Simplified. You can find the links from today's episode in the show notes. If you'd like to connect with Rachel, she's on Instagram and Teachers Pay Teachers at Bright Futures Counseling. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes of School Counseling Simplified. Talk to you next week.